G'day, it's Adam Moore of VK4GHZ. Today I'm going to show you my Nexion touchscreen interface for a K3NG rotator controller system. Now, you don't necessarily have to be into EME or on satellites to get value out of a rotator controller. Aside from being an interface from your PC to your rotator, this uh, system will add a lot of value to your existing rotator. Even if, look, you just might be a VHF, UHF guy on 6, 2, 70, and 23, this will add a lot of extra functionality to what you already have. Stick around and I'll show you how. Okay, my basic azimuth only system here, I've got a Yosu G800A rotator and I'll walk you through my rotatorfeatures.h file. Now as you can see, I've got Yosu emulation enabled, English language. Now because I'm using a Tensi 3.2 microcontroller, I'm taking advantage of the better analog to digital converters that that microcontroller has. So I've enabled 12-bit resolution on the ADCs. I'm using the G800's internal analog potentiometer for azimuth feedback. Um, elevation position is um, using an ADXL345 sensor. We will come to that in the next video when we enable elevation. Uh, define feature connection display. I've enabled the audio, audible alert. Uh, GS232B emulation. I've enabled the serial help on the Arduino IDE serial terminal, that's kind of handy for um, setting your system up and debugging. Uh, option clock, always have a leading zero. Now on the settings page, on the settings file, you can see I've set my decimal places to zero. So what we'll do now is compile that and upload it to the microcontroller. Now when the system boots, the splash page will tell you what features you've enabled. In this case we've just got a basic cheeseburger. There are three pages available. This is the main display page. There's a configuration screen. We'll come back to this. And there's an about screen. So this will tell you the Arduino code version you're running. Uh, it's by Anthony Good, K3NG. G'day goody. And this is the Nexion screen version um, by moi. Back to the main page. So you can see here we're pointing at 298 degrees at the moment. There are buttons for um, turning it counterclockwise clockwise and a stop button. Now when you press most of the buttons, not all of them, they will give you some visual confirmation that they've actually been touched by highlighting them. Let's just demonstrate that. I will touch the CW button and as you can see it's highlighted yellow when you do actually touch it. So now it's turning clockwise. Now you just saw the overlap message come up. The G800 DXA is a 450 degree rotator. I've configured it so that north is zero. It passes through south, back up to north, and then we've got that 90 degrees of overlap between 360 and 450 degrees. Let's go counterclockwise. Like so. Stop. Now you'll notice there's a delay there. That's because I've enabled the slow start and the slow stop functionality. And I've uh, set up a two second slow start and slow stop. Now if you were to control it directly from your rotator like so, you're gonna get a, pretty much an instant stop. Now if you wanna send your antennas to a specific bearing, that's really easy to do. Just simply touch the number and enter in your bearing, say 250 degrees, enter, and off it goes. We can see the status line, which is actually the VSS1 variable, it tells us what it's doing. It's going counterclock 250 degrees. On this main page, you've got two presets available, preset one, preset two, a short press here. We'll send it to your preset, and preset one just happens to be called here. We can actually give that a meaningful name and to configure presets all you need to do is just a long press of either preset button there. You can enter in your desired bearing, say um, uh, 122 and let me call this V, oops, backspace, VK4 uh, 
BB, my local beacon cluster. Now, as you can see here, the keyboard is laid out as A, B, C, D, etc. It seemed to make a little bit more uh, sense than being a Qity keyboard. Enter. And if we just do a short touch there, it will go to that preset bearing. Go to. This is pretty cool. What you can do here is you can actually send your antennas to a specific grid square. Handy for contesting. Now notice in grid square mode, when you're entering a grid, the Y and the Z are greyed out. You can't actually select those because they're not part of a valid grid square. So in this case, say I want to point it to QF22, enter, and it will go there. 212 degrees, which happens to be Melbourne. Big hello to everyone in VK3 watching. So that could be handy during contesting. And we've reached our target. Now a long press of the go to button will bring up a coordinates converter. So what you can do, you can convert between lat long and grid square and from grid square to lat long. So I'm, you, you may know the lat long of, of someone, say 32.123 degrees, a longitude of 156.987. I have no idea where that is. Enter, we'll convert that, but it's grid locator QF87. Now, if you wanted to, you could always go to that result, like so. Which just happens to be 143 degrees from here. It's probably out in the Tasman Sea somewhere. Likewise, if we were to enter a grid square, um, PF57, convert, that's our latitude and longitude. Top left and top right here are navigation buttons. This one will just simply cycle forward through your pages. This one will cycle reverse. This is the configuration screen. Here we have two radio buttons. This one will enable the second configuration screen. This is a screen you wouldn't normally want to um, uh, tinker with once your rotator is set up. But hit, this is where we can set up end stops. So the procedure would be to manually rotate your Rotate it to the full counterclockwise position, press full CCW, and do a long press of set to set that endpoint. Then you would manually rotate your rotator to the full clockwise position. I won't do that now, but this is what you would do. Press full, set our full CW, and a long press of the set button. Now, for whatever reason, if you have some offset that you need to introduce, you just imp enter the uh, calibra uh, azimuth calibration angle here, so maybe it ended up being 10 degrees off, so 10 degrees, and the long press of the manually calibrate button will set that offset. So what if you don't like black text on a white background? Well, that's really easy. All you need to do is touch the word azimuth, and you can make it whatever you want, say red on a yellow background like so. Ah, now this is one for you guys that are still running LCDs. Let's do this. And we'll change it. The second font is an LCD seven segment look. So there you go. No excuses for swapping over to a touch screen now. All right, let's change that back. I kind of prefer the Calibri font. And we'll make that, um, we can make that yellow on uh, mid gray. How about that? Likewise, the navigation buttons, a long press here on the main page will take you to the settings page where you can make that whatever you like um, perhaps white on black is your fancy it's really easy to change back to the configuration screen here we've got a screensaver now a value of zero will disable the screensaver if we put a value of 1 to 999 say 60 so after 60 minutes the screen will dim down to 5% brightness fairly obvious what that does it, it adjusts the screen brightness Update rate. Currently set to 500 milliseconds. This will determine how quickly the variables get updated on the screen. This will really come into play when you've got an elevation enabled and a decimal point. So we'll see that in another video. Diagnostics. This is a page you wouldn't normally want to uh, look at, but it's there for debugging purposes and setting up. When you enable the diagnostics, it opens up a diagnostics page, which shows many of the system variables like so. And also on your other pages, it will 
show some relevant variables like so. Useful for diagnostics only. Normally you wouldn't want to see that so we will turn that and the second calibration page off. Alright so what we'll do now is add some extra features and you'll see the effect of that in the display so I'm going to add the clock so we'll compile that and upload that to the microcontroller. Let's upload that. Once again the splash screen will tell us the options and in this case we have a clock set. And you'll notice top left what was the reverse navigation button still is the reverse navigation button is where we see the clock. Not terribly useful having a free running clock like that so let's add the GPS. Like so splash screen now tells us we've got a clock and a GPS. Give it a few seconds and in the bottom row we have some statistics here. It tells us we're getting five GPS satellites. These are the coordinates and the GPS time is now displayed up here. And it's also calculated our grid square. I've just enabled the park feature. We'll upload that to the TNC like so. It tells us we've got a clock, GPS and the park feature. Now when the park feature is enabled we have a park button. First of all I'm going to set the park bearing so a long touch of the park button. We can enter this uh, park settings page and I just happen to have it set for 145 degrees. Enter and if we short press the park button it will go park for us. And in this VSS2 message box here it uh, tells us it's parked. Alright, so what we'll do now is enable the auto park feature. Uploading, and we've got the auto park feature. When the auto park feature is enabled, a long press of the park button, we're now able to configure the auto park duration. So if I want that to auto park after one minute, like so. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention with the park. You've got to, um, once you enter your park value, um, say 155 degrees, then it's a long press of the set button and it will confirm that it's writing those values. I'll just press that again. You can see that uh, we'll change it back to 145. So when I long press the set button, it's going to set the park azimuth to 145 and the auto park. So long press on set, as you can see there. Let's just set those. Now to disable the auto park feature, you can just press zero and we'll long press to the set. Now the auto park is off. When the auto park is set, you'll see the icon in the bottom row here, AP. That tells you it's enabled and it's armed. So I'm just gonna disable that for now. Zero, long press of set. and the icon is dulled out. All right, so that's a basic azimuth only system. What we'll do in the next video is introduce elevation, which you would use it for moon and sun tracking and satellite tracking, and we'll see the differences that makes to your Nexion display. Until then, stay safe.